What's up guys, Tommy Bowyer here from Movie Rewind and today I will be reviewing Doctor Who Series 1. There will be spoilers in this review, so without further ado, let's get into it. Doctor Who Series 1 stars Christopher Eccleston as the ninth incarnation of the Doctor and Billy Piper as his companion Rose Tyler. It aired from the 26th of March 2005 and concluded after 13 episodes on the 18th of June 2005. It was revived by Russell T Davies, a long time Doctor Who fan who had been pressuring the BBC to bring back Doctor Who since the late 1990s and it's fair to say there was a lot riding on his shoulders during series one because he had to make Doctor Who appeal and relate to a 21st century audience. Doctor Who had not been on air in episode form for 16 years if you do not count the TV movie made in 1996 starring Paul McGann. And honestly, series one is one of the most consistently strong series of Doctor Who out there. Put it this way, after the first episode scored a record breaking over 10 million viewers, the BBC decided four days after it was released to revive the show for a Christmas special and a second series so it just highlights that the BBC critics and fans were very impressed and my god they were right to series one is a fantastic series of Doctor Who it's one of my personal favorite and it's brace basically just awesome I will be given a brief overview of series one overall and then I'll be given little mini reviews of each episode and a conclusion at the end as I have previously said there will be spoilers in this review so if you haven't seen Doctor Doctor Who Series 1, then I would wholly recommend that you watch that before watching this review. Firstly, we need to talk about the thing which can make or break a series of Doctor Who, and that is the portrayal of the Doctor. And I have to say, the Ninth Doctor is one of my personal favourites. He's fantastic, and personally, I think he's pretty underrated. Christopher Eccleston is an amazing actor. Throughout the duration of the series, he has ample opportunity to highlight his acting abilities, whether it's comedic, whether it's emotional, or whether it's serious, he does a great job all around. And the Ninth Doctor is an amazing incarnation of the Doctor. Put it this way, he gets more development in one series than some Doctors get in three series. At the start of this series, he is suffering from PTSD as a result of the Time War. He's very dark, he's very harsh in tone, he doesn't give people second chances. By the end of this series, he is softening, you can see that he's starting to give people second chances and I think that is largely to do with the presence of companion Rose Tyler portrayed by Billy Piper and Rose is one of my personal favourite companions. At the start of this series she starts out as basically someone who just lives a normal life, you know, just like the rest of us and I think that's a good thing because a companion should reflect normal people. They are basically the audience, they react in the same way that we would to certain events. When she goes forward and back in time, I think her reactions to time travel seem really genuine and reflect what the majority of people would think. And it's great to see Rose build in confidence during this series. She's not just some young girl running around with the Doctor. She is her own independent person and she builds in confidence throughout the duration of this series, which I think is a nice touch. And honestly, the Ninth Doctor and Rose are one of the strongest companion teams because I just love them together. They help each other out, they work well with one another, and Eccleston and Piper have good chemistry together, so I think that works as well. Now, I watched Doctor Who Series 1 last week in preparation for this view review, and I have my little black book in which I wrote down my thoughts on every episode in Series 1, and honestly, it's a very consistently strong series. I couldn't really pick out a bad episode of Series 1. You can tell that Russell T Davies and all the other writers involved really gave it their all for Series 1 because they didn't know if this was going to work or fail. There'd been a number of opportunities to bring Doctor Who back and after 16 years who knew if it was going to be a success. So you can tell they put their all into this series and my god in terms of the episodes that we got I think it paid off. Rose is a very strong episode. You learn everything about Rose's life in the first five minutes of this episode and Davis has used the concept of show don't tell in which you don't just have her narrating what her life is like 
like you just see what her life is like and you can understand she lives a pretty normal everyday life just like the majority of us and I think that works really well I like how the ninth doctor is introduced as Rose's savior just this mysterious stranger who Rose doesn't completely trust she learns to trust him throughout this episode but at first she doesn't exactly know who he is or what is he doing is he actually the good guy or is he trying to harm them I think that's a very good concept to use Davies uses comedy in this episode to establish the dynamics between his characters and I think that works very well this whole episode is basically learning more about Rose introducing the doctor and what the dynamic is going to be like between the doctor and Rose the Autons as a villain I think works as well not only are they a very unique villain, I like the Autons, they're also a classic villain. So then classic Who fans tuning into this episode would not necessarily be alienated if things seemed a bit different from what they remember. Overall, Rose is a very strong introductory episode. It doesn't delve too much into the Doctor's backstory. I don't think it has to. To keep the viewer intrigued, I think it's good that the Doctor remained quite mysterious in this episode. What this episode does is introduce Rose, a brilliant companion and a very relatable character. The End of the World is a great introductory episode to time travel in the Doctor Who universe and I think that the concept works well because as the Doctor says sometimes he doesn't intervene he just lets history take its course so he's not going to save the earth the earth's time is up and it has to be destroyed so I think that's a really good concept to introduce I really like that they add some development to not only the Doctor's character you learn more about the time war and the fact that he's a time lord you also get some development done to the Doctor and Rose's relationship. I like the fact that Rose basically is overwhelmed and she just says, My God, I've run off with this mysterious man. I know nothing about him. What the hell have I done? I think that's a natural reaction that any of us would have done. So I think that works well. And the fact that the Doctor and Rose in the end start to trust one another as the Doctor tells some of his more personal secrets to Rose. I think that's good for their development as characters. That works well. The plot itself for this episode is okay. I like the fact that it introduces a range of aliens. It highlights that the show is not afraid to introduce loads of different aliens that we don't know a lot about. So I think this episode highlights the sheer variety and scope of the show. The villain, Cassandra, is okay. She's pretty memorable, but she doesn't exactly stand out in a line of Doctor Who villains. And my only gripe with this episode is the final act does feel a little bit like a video game when the, with the doctor jumping through fans in order to turn the defenses of the observation deck on i think that was just a bit too much like a video game but i think this episode is strong overall as i said it introduces a variety of aliens you learn more about the doctor and it's great to see rose and the doctor bond over this episode the unquiet dead much like the previous episode is a fantastic introductory episode to the ideas of time travel however instead of going forward in time we're going back in time and honestly i think the unquiet dead is very underrated i love this episode what makes it stand out to me is the portrayal of charles dickens he's amazing it's a very strong performance and the fact that it's charles dickens and ghosts brilliant it just seems like the right concept to use the gelf are a very creepy villain and they add to this episode's creepiness it really is got beautiful imagery in this episode it uses the concept of being set at christmas and being set during the period very very well as i've said it's very creepy and the fact that i like that this episode established the rules of doctor who the fact that someone can be born in the 21st century and can die in the 19th century it's good to introduce that because then you know that there are stakes involved these people can die in the past so i think for new viewers it was good that these early episodes established the rules uh, of the doctor who universe and what traveling the doctor with the doctor can mean overall i really like the unquiet dead i think it's a very underrated episode and the portrayal of charles dickens is definitely what makes this episode stand out for me aliens of london gives the characters a chance to breathe you learn more about rose's mum jackie and rose's boyfriend mickey which i think is a really good thing because you see these characters interact with one another you and you start to understand the dynamics between certain characters so i think that works well i also think it was a good thing 
that Jackie and Mickey find out about the Doctor straight away so you don't have to try and hide and Rose has to constantly run off and come up with excuses. Just everyone involved knows about the Doctor and what he is capable of and what the TARDIS is. So I think that's a really good thing. The Slovene mystery is used well. The only problem I've ever had with the Slovene is the farting. I've never really understood why that is used. I honestly think it's just there to make little kids laugh. I don't think if you took it away, you would lose anything from the episode. So I like the Slovene. I just don't like the constant farting in it. Overall though, I would say the Aliens of London is a good mystery. I think it's just primarily there to set up the next episode. I do think, however, it gives the characters a chance to breathe and interact with each other, which is a good thing. World War 3 is a good conclusion to the show's first two-parter. It's not exactly a standout two-parter in any way. There have been better ones, but it's a good first attempt. The Slovene design is really strong. I li I've always liked the Slovene and their design, so I think it works well during this story. Harriet Jones very strong female character, a figure of authority to challenge the Doctor. I think that works really well. I've always enjoyed Harriet Jones. I like that World War Three gives Mickey and Jackie something to do. It doesn't just forget they exist. And the fact that Mickey is the one to save the Doctor and Rose technically, I think that's really good because Mickey definitely deserved a standout moment because he hadn't been treated well by Rose up until this point. So I think it's good that he gets a chance to save the Doctor and Rose. Honestly, World War Three is okay. It's more light-hearted. There are stakes involved, but it doesn't exactly have you on the edge of your seat in terms of the intensity and tension of the episode. The fact that the Slovene are killed by being blown up is okay. You could question whether the Doctor and Rose and Harriet Jones getting under a table could save them from an entire building being blown up and the fact that there seems to be no consequences. Everyone just believes Harriet Jones is correct and they just get on with it. So things like that you do start to question and say well actually that is a little bit far-fetched but i still like world war 3 i think as i said about the previous episode it gives the characters a chance to breathe you start to understand the dynamics more and rose becomes an official companion to the doctor which is of course something to be said well so i like world war 3 it's a good two-parter it's just not the best two-parter doctor who's ever had Dalek is the strongest episode of this series and one of the strongest episodes in Doctor Who history. This episode is intense. I was on the edge of my seat throughout even though I know how the episode ends. It just sucks you in and that's a great thing. Christopher Eccleston gives his strongest performance as the Ninth Doctor, especially the jail scene between the Doctor and the Dalek. You can literally feel the emotion and the devastation the Doctor feels being confronted by the Dalek. And you can question the Ninth Doctor throughout this episode. He is prepared to kill the Dalek. And I think that's great. It's good when you can question the Doctor's motives and whether he is doing the right thing. And I think this episode is a turning point for the Doctor because at the episode's conclusion, when Rose prevents him from full-on murdering this Dalek, I think it highlights that the, Do the Ninth Doctor is starting to change, he's starting to soften, and he starts to appreciate Rose more because she's starting to make him understand that you can't just kill this thing because you want to, you have to be the better person here. So I think that works very well. The Dalek, the fact that this episode has one Dalek in was a great choice because it highlights just how deadly the Daleks are. Because if you had an army of Daleks in this episode, or even five or three or even two Daleks in this episode, I don't think you would understand how deadly they were. The fact that one Dalek can basically take out an entire base and is unstoppable, I mean it kills itself in the end, so this thing is virtually unstoppable, just highlights how great of a villain they are. Honestly, Dalek is an amazing episode. It's paced well, it's intense, you're on the edge of your seat throughout, and Eccleston gives one of his best performances in the role of the Ninth Doctor. So Dalek is the knockout. It is the knockout of this series. The Long Game is, once again, a solid episode of Doctor Who. 
I like the concept that this episode uses regarding media manipulation and fake news. You could even say it was ahead of its time in tackling these issues. The villain is okay, uh, Sean Penn does a good job portraying this character. He's actually a villain that I would say you love to hate because he's pretty ent entertaining. However, he's not particularly memorable, so I wouldn't exactly say he's one of the standout villains of this series. The problem I have with this episode, and I think it was intentional, Adam, who was introduced in Dalek, is pathetic. He's a really bad companion, but I think that was this episode's point to highlight that some people are just not up to being companions for the Doctor, they're only after themselves, and Adam, you know, he's gone by the end of this episode, so good riddance to bad rubbish, I didn't like Adam, I thought he was terrible, so I think it's a good thing he weren't in any more episodes of this series. Honestly, The Long Game is a solid episode of Doctor Who, uh, just like most of series one. It is a must-watch episode though, if you want to understand the finale. So I think this episode is more about setting up the story arc and the series finale um, than being anything which really stands out. Father's Day is one of the most emotional episodes of series one and you know what? I, um, I don't care what anyone says, but this is the first Doctor Who episode to make me cry, even when I saw it last week, it's a very emotional episode. If Dalek gave Christopher Eccleston a chance to showcase his acting capabilities, then Father's Day really does give an opportunity for Billy Piper to do the same, and she kills it. Her performance as Rose is heartbreaking throughout this episode. I love the scenes between Rose and her father, there's some great emotional moments there which do make you cry, and honestly, viewers know that the only way the conflict in this episode can be resolved is for Rose's father to die. You know that it's coming, and even when it does come, you're still heartbroken because of it, which is great writing, it's amazing. Honestly, I like that this uh, episode in particular highlights tension between the Doctor and Rose and even though it's just a small thing, she saved just one single person. As the Doctor says, you cannot directly change history. Every single person in the universe is important and you can't just change history like that because it is not the right thing to do. So it's great to see tension between the Doctor and Rose. The villains of this episode are great. I would love to see them return. The only thing about them, and people have criticised this, is sometimes the questionable CGI it doesn't look great now, but this series was released in 2005 on a BBC budget, so I would say you can be forgiven for saying, well look, the villains are great, the CGI is not great, but given the time it was released, you've just got to accept it, and I think that's the right way to go about it. Overall, Father's Day, one of the most emotional episodes of the series, Billy Piper is the standout, and it just made me love the character of Rose so much because this episode is centered around her and it makes you love her as a result. The Empty Child is one of the first truly scary episodes of New Who. The Empty Child himself is terrifying. Even though it's quite a simple design, it's just a kid with a gas mask on it, it's become synonymous and iconic with the character and he is creepy. Oh my God, he is very creepy in this episode, I have to admit. Overall, this episode embraces the World War II setting really well. It feels realistic. It has a good World War II vibe, which I think is a good thing. Uh, you learn about World War II a lot in school, so tuning into this episode, people, uh, especially young people, would know a lot about this era. So I think it was a good setting to have this episode in. Captain Jack is introduced, portrayed by John Barrowman and he is amazing. This is a great introduction for this character. I love the flirting relationship between Captain Jack and Rose. I think that works very, very well. And the cliffhanger at the end of this episode. My God, edge of your seat tension because you have no idea how the Doctor, Rose and Captain Jack are gonna get out 
of this situation and you want to see what happens next which is perfect for a two-parter and perfect for a cliffhanger because you want viewers to come back eagerly anticipating what's going to happen next so i really enjoyed the empty child first truly scary episode of new who and the empty child himself is terrifying the doctor dances is thrilling and intense from beginning to end it's a great follow-up to the empty child and this is a very strong two-parter. Writer Stephen Moffat deserves a lot of, of credit because he makes an engaging script which has perfect humour and uplifting moments to cover up for the quite dark and scary moments as well. So it's a very good mix blended together which works really well. I like the fact that the Ninth Doctor got his Everybody Lives moment. More than any other Doctor, the Ninth Doctor deserved this. He had lost so much and the fact that he has an opportunity to save everyone is amazing. Because this episode, as I said, is pretty intense and quite scary in a lot of places. So the fact that it has a happy ending works very well. I love the ending of this episode. Chris Eccleston is amazing during the Everybody Lives scene you do have a tear in your eye because it's a fantastic moment which the Ninth Doctor really deserves and of course Captain Jack is officially given a position in the TARDIS to join the Doctor and Rose and I think that works really well. Those three work very well together. If I had to highlight a time in which three, in which uh, the Doctor and two companions worked really well, it would be near the end of series one because Rose and Captain Jack work really well as companions and the Doctor's amazing as well. So the Doctor dances is an amazing conclusion to a fantastic two-part. It's a lot better than the first two-parter in series one, I have to admit. It's 10 out of 10 all the way around and that really goes down to the performances as well as Stephen Moffat's writing. I think he showed with this episode that he was a fantastic writer and he would be crucial in Doctor Who going forward. Boomtown is a pretty light-hearted, laid-back episode, which I think is a good thing because after Boomtown, the series starts getting pretty intense and emotional. So I think it's good that Boomtown just sits back and just allows the characters to interact with quite a nice, simple plot. I like the Doctor, Rose, Captain Jack and Mickey. They're a good, strong unit good team. I think that works really well. I love that Mickey finally stands up to Rose and says, hang on a minute, you're a pretty terrible girlfriend. You just abandon me all the time. And that's great because let's face it, Rose and Mickey's relationship is not built on strong foundations. So I think it's great that Mickey finally stands up to Rose and says, hang on a minute, you're going to sit there, you're going to listen to me, and I'm going to tell you what I think about this whole situation. Mickey definitely deserved that moment. The Slovene returned during this episode, and honestly, I prefer the Slovene in Boomtown to their previous appearance in this series for the simple reason the farting is toned down a lot, which is a really good thing. And I think more so in this episode the doctor has to deal with the consequences of his actions because he is taking the the slovene back to Raxacorico Fallopatorius where she will be killed because they have the death penalty on her planet and i think it's great to see the doctor having to confront his actions and the consequences of them so i think that's really good the main point of boomtown is to introduce the concept of the heart of the tardis it doesn't feel shoehorned in, they make it work, but Boomtown is pretty much that episode which is more light-hearted and introduces concepts which will be crucial in the series finale. So I enjoy Boomtown. It's a solid episode, even though it is just there to really introduce the concept of the heart of the TARDIS. Bad Wolf is another solid episode which I really enjoy, even though it feels a tiny bit dated for the simple reason it has shows like Big Brother and The Weakest Link involved in it. However, I really like the satire of reality TV and game shows. The fact that if you don't get a question right in a game show, we'll kill you to make it more entertaining. It really does feel like something our society could do at some point in the future. So I always love the concept of this episode. I think it works really well. I also enjoy how the Bad Wolf story arc is continued. The fact that Rose is still a bit puzzled about why the phrase Bad Wolf is coming out throughout the episode. Davies 
um, during his tenure as showrunner of Doctor Who really liked using particular words and phrases to kind of reference the story arc of a series and Bad Wolf is a prime example of that and in my opinion his best example of it. Honestly, Bad Wolf, very strong episode. The cliffhanger is superb in this episode. The fact that Rose has been kidnapped by an army of Daleks. Not only have these Daleks survived the time war, but you saw how much it took for the Doctor to take down just a single Dalek and now he has an army of Daleks to deal with. That raises the stakes significantly. And also on a side note, Linda. Linda with a Y, the companion that never was. She was brilliant in this episode. You should have made her a full-time companion. She was great. She was great. Very likeable, very funny, and just a great companion potential. You should have made Linda a companion. That's the one problem I have about series one. Linda should have been made a companion. I'm just going to get that out of the way now. Overall, Bad Wolf is a great parody and satire of reality TV and game shows, and it has a fantastic cliffhanger which raises the stakes. The Parting of the Ways is an emotional thrill ride from beginning to end. This series finale is fantastic, and it is the best one of Modern Who. Now, I love the Dalek in Dalek. It's one of the strongest uh, Doctor Who stories of all time. But honestly, the Daleks are at their best in the parting of the ways because they are insane and they are overpowered. They basically wipe out everyone on this station. And a series finale of Doctor Who, you should really feel that the stakes are against the Doctor and his companions. And oh my God, you feel like they're against them on this one. The Daleks are just wiping everyone out. The Dalek Emperor has basically gone insane. I love the Dalek Emperor. He's got an amazing, amazing design. And I like the fact that he seems to think he's some kind of god because he created a new race of Daleks. I love that the Doctor is prepared to literally wipe out humanity in order to defeat the Daleks. And it's great when he finally says no. I will not become like you. I will be a coward rather than a murderer any day of the week. And I think that's great. That's a really defining Ninth Doctor moment. Linda, the companion who I think should have been, is killed off during this episode. And I think that's just great because Davis, Davis put so much development into this character to make her likeable just to kill her off. Which I think is great because there's some very likeable characters during this series finale who are just mercilessly killed off, which adds to the emotion and the tension in this episode. Rose is given a lot to do in the parting of the way. She's basically sent back to Earth by the Doctor because he cannot guarantee her safety. He cares about Rose first and foremost. But Rose is saying no. You know, I'm my own person. If I want to help you, I will. And the fact that she takes in the heart of the TARDIS and then erases the Daleks from existence is brilliant. You could say, oh, it feels a bit phoned in because Davis has just wiped the Daleks from existence. I think it works really well. The fact that the Bad Wolf story arc goes full circle and Rose is the one who spreads the clues of Bad Wolf in order for her to understand that she can help the Doctor. I think that's worked really well. Series 1 has a very strong story arc and The Passing of the Ways is an intense episode and of course we all know what's coming when the Ninth Doctor sacrifices himself to save Rose by taking in the Time Vortex. He doesn't even hesitate. He's prepared to end his own life in order to save his companion which I think just sums up the Ninth Doctor as a whole that he's prepared to do that. The regeneration scene is really strong. I love this regeneration scene. I think it hits the right balance of trying to explain regeneration to a modern audience. It has emotional moments. And as the Ninth Doctor said, he was fantastic and oh my God, he really was. So in conclusion, Doctor Who series one is, in the words of the Ninth Doctor, fantastic. This series has everything. It is engaging, it is emotional, it is action packed, it is adventurous, it is fresh. It is everything Doctor Who needed to revive itself for a 21st century audience. The Ninth Doctor 
is an amazing and underrated incarnation of the Doctor. Christopher Eccleston is fantastic during this series and Billy Piper as Rose Tyler is one of my personal favourite companions and they make up a really strong TARDIS team which are really good. All the other additional characters, Jackie Tyler, Mickey Smith, Captain Jack are amazing. They all have their standout moments and make this series work. I could not pick out a bad episode of this series. Series 1 is surprisingly very consistent in terms of episodes. If I had to pick out a good, uh, great one, it would have to be Dalek. That is my personal favourite because it is such a strong episode of Doctor Who which brought back the Daleks at full power. However, the parting of the ways is not that far behind because that gave the Ninth Doctor the send-off he deserved and my god was it emotional as hell now if you were wondering my history with series one of doctor who the first episode i ever saw and i remember it to this day i was i was with my mum driving down to london to go and meet my godparents and when we got there the tv was on and what had just started the doctor who series one episode bad wolf so i didn't have a clue what was going on however I was taken in by this television program and mesmerized by it and I have been ever since. Doctor Who series 1 is one of the strongest series of the modern era. I owe so much to it, so do millions of new fans who had never seen an episode of Doctor Who before but once they had seen this series they were fans for life. So. I would give Doctor Who Series 1 a well-deserved Grade 1 ranking because it is one of the strongest series of the modern era. So thanks for watching guys, I really do hope you enjoyed my Doctor Who Series 1 review. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe in order to receive great and maybe even improved quality content in the future. Now, I really do hope you enjoyed my Series 1 Doctor Who review. I've put probably more effort into this review than I have had with any other one because I'm a massive fan of Doctor Who so it took a lot for me to uh, watch this and make notes and put it together so I really do hope that you enjoyed it now I will be releasing a series 2 review which is another series that I love just so much I will be releasing that in August basically how these reviews are working is I'm releasing one every other month so I have enough time to prepare and watch the series and make notes on it and etc so I hope you look forward to that and I will see you in another one. See ya!